forward to the cloud. So welcome, all of you. This is a great, uh, especially special pleasure um, because I have so many of you here who uh, have uh, been with me for so long. And I would like to, Shannon, if you could be admitting people in as they come in, or maybe Wes, you can do this for a few minutes. I, I'd like to first introduce uh, Shannon Weil, who's going to be helping me by watching uh, for any questions that you have in the chat. And I want to introduce Shannon. She wrote this wonderful book, Strike a Long Trot, uh, Legendary Horsewoman Linda Tellington Jones. And it's her experience, uh, first of all, in my school for a year in 1967. And then we have been, we've been in touch ever since and working together ever since. And I want to um, also acknowledge B.B. Dagan, uh, I'm, who is one of our wonderful, wonderful instructors for horses and companion animals from Germany. And Tina Constance from the UK, another one of our wonderful instructors. We just have, um, and Vonda uh, uh, has from, uh, I think you're in Belgium now, right? Um, uh, 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 she's been one of our instructors for uh, our wonderful teachers for many, many years. And we just have, and Pam Beats and so many of you. Um, I, what I would like to do, I'm going to start um, just introducing this concept that I had, how I learned to listen to horses. And I'm I'm going to use some PowerPoint and some just jumping around looking at pictures and ideas that I've had about this. So I'm going to screen share and see if I can get it right. Share this screen and get the right one up because I have quite a bit. Of, oh, where are you? Here we go. I'm just bring this over so you can see it. I hope. Come on. Oh, oh here you come. So I I started thinking about this, wanting to share how I learned to listen to horses. Because I'm often asked, how is it, Linda, that you can get on a horse and in a few minutes have a connection with them or maybe not even riding them just have a connection on the ground and i i actually i <laughs> i learned this from my parents who were really close to all animals to my grandfather who lived with us when it was actually my great uncle but that's a whole other story um who was with us and i remember lived with us. I remember him saying to me when I was about, I think I was 12, and I was starting a two-year-old thoroughbred at the time who was boarding on our farm. And I was starting her under saddle, following a book that if you've read my book, um, you, you will... Um, you will have realized that when I, uh, before I was 12, I was working with the concept of bucking horses out at our stable, at the Briarcrest stable. And I was the kid who was put on the horses after they were bucked out by Mrs. Metherall in the round pen. And I, there were numerous times when I got dumped on my head. And one day I was riding home to our farm from, from the stable after school. And um, I, was uh, a, an, an old man on a cane came walking up a long driveway and stopped me and he had a book in his hand and he handed me this book and he said that he could see from his porch the the round pen from the stable it was behind his property and and um, had seen me come rain or snow or shine every day past his yard and he had been a cavalry uh, officer in the Spanish American Spanish War and had this book written by I'm quite sure it was an American cavalry officer about how you start young horses without bucking them out so anyway I took this book home and we had a two-year-old 16 hand almost three 
uh, thoroughbred and they are boarding at our at our farm owned by friends we weren't a boarding stable we just had a few friends horses with us on the farm and um, I started her and I remember my grandfather putting his hand on this horse's neck and just saying never say an angry word to a horse if you lose your temper get off tie a horse to the tree I remember this and wait until you're no longer angry and I you know, when I when I think of the method that we've developed over the years that gives other people the ability to make this what I now consider a heart to heart, cell to cell and soul to soul connection. We can do this with the techniques of the Tellington method, and that is what is so fantastic. But there's something that you have to know. And I, I just want to show you a few of these horses. But one of the things that we don't have in there, and BB and Vanda, I don't know if you've been in the, when I don't think you've, we haven't spoken since I started saying there's one component that we're not talking about that is completely important. And that is the function of energy. And that that is how I do it. And I would not have dared to say this word a few years ago. You can, those of you who know me will maybe laugh, but the energy word is love. And this is not a word that I could easily say until a few years ago. I mean, I really, for a lot of reasons, had managed to shut that side of me down. And, um, where I dared to start to use the word was thanks to Frederic Pignon. And I know that if you, many of you are aware, acquainted with the work of Frederic Pignon and his amazing wife, Magali Delgado. And I would, I've given three workshops and have co-taught with them in, um, in France. And one of the things that I just so appreciate about Frederic and the amazing stuff that he does with horses, he, as a man, as a, an incredible man, dares to say that his, the energy he uses is love. And when you think about this, I, I just want you to think about it. One of the, my favorite books on my book list is Love is Letting Go of Fear, Dr. Jerry Jampolsky. He crossed the Rainbow Bridge just last month. Uh, he had to be very close to 100 because I had dinner with him like only five years ago when he was in his 90s, mid 90s. And that little book, Love is Letting Go of Fear, he has been teaching this worldwide for many, many, many years. And this concept, there are only two emotions, you all, love and fear, love and fear. And horses are naturally, as are we, we're naturally fearful. Fear is in every cell in our body. And that's a whole other thing. I've had the great experience of being in a past life regression and actually seeing in my body that we're all programmed with fear of all the people who've ever been on the planet. And it's important for our survival. And yet, if we understand, wait a minute, when is fear appropriate? And when can we recognize that may not be our fear or it may not be necessary? But I have to tell you, if I get many, many riders who come into our classes or people who are now only working from the ground and they are afraid in some situations. And what I say to you in this case, respect that in you and step back and say, okay, what can I do to make me feel safe? And I'm going to show you a little video working with a horse that I'm coaching online um, where one has to be careful. So love is letting go of fear. Now, we all know that aggression, if you've been around me very much, <laughs> comes from a place of fear and is a cry for help. And that is really important in the method of the Tellington work because 
all of us who've been around horses all our lives have done things that we wish we hadn't when a horse bit or kicked. Man, I used to give them what I called thunder, right? Until <laughs> 1982, I was um, teaching a weekly class in A Course in Miracles, and I read the statement that aggression comes from a place of fear and is a cry for help. And this is important to this discussion on how I learned to listen to horses. Because if we meet aggression with aggression, in other words, what I had to do was stop and think, wait a minute, when a horse bites or kicks, what can I do to show that horse, wait a minute, this is not acceptable. Here's what we need you to do. And that's what this Kellington method is based upon. Now, let me just start showing you some of these. In this first um, little slide that Shannon put together for me last night. Oh, and <laughs> she said, watch the, wait, I'm supposed to click on this and it's supposed to go forward. Okay. So Linda, yeah. um, you might want to go into the slideshow mode at the top oh, there. Thank you. Except it's going to flip it on me then. Oh, I won't, I won't, uh, right in the middle up. I won't be able to stop. There you that. go. Yeah, you will. Okay, thanks. Okay. And then say, um, you know, play from start or play from over to the left, play from start. There we go. There we go. <laughs> good, good, good. Now, this was um, not my first horse. I'm, oh, wait, I have to change me over here. This is my first horse, Trixie. And this is my dad and my brother, Jerry. And this mare, look at her ears. For those of you who do personality analysis, have either done it with me or read my book or seen the video, look how sharp her ears are. Now there, she's wide between the eyes, which made her very smart. And her ears are pricked really forward. It makes her a little hot. And my dad, when I was six years old, we moved to my grandfather's, my dad's dad's farm, uh, so he could help him with wheat and the raising of pigs for the war effort. And I had to ride to school <laughs> in Gibbons, Alberta, uh, north of Edmonton, Alberta in Canada, um, because there was no school bus and it was a long way to walk. And my cousins who lived an eighth of a mile toward the school in the direction of the school, they all rode and we had a stable at the school. And so my dad went to a local stable in Edmonton, told they needed a horse for me, put me on this mare in the arena and she promptly walked into the barn with me. And uh, it's interesting, all I remember about her uh, until I started thinking about this for this talk and looking at this picture again, is I, one incident that I remember with this mare when I was late and my cousins had left me and I got to their gate and she didn't want to go any farther. And I somehow gave her a whack. I don't, I don't know what that means. I didn't ever carry a crop and I was riding bareback and I was that size that you see there. And somehow she spun around and dumped me and went home into the barn and I go stomping down the road and I went, went don't, don't ask me what made me do this. I went in the basement, I got clothes pins and I went to the stable and I clipped them on her ears thinking I was going to teach her a lesson with this ear work. <laughs> now, for those of you who have been doing ear tea touch on horses all these years, hmm, that was the beginning of the ear work. Now, isn't this interesting? that that's what I remember about this mare. What I thought about yesterday, this horse was a saint. I knew nothing. I don't ever remember anybody even showing me how to hold the reins. And yet I rode her to school. Somehow I got the bridle on her. I rode her to school, put her in the stable, rode home. And we used to come home after school and ride again every day. And then when I was um, nine, we moved, uh, let's see now, how do I do this, Shannon? How do I get the next slide? Yeah. Help, help. 
if you press space, it might just go to the next I slide. I just did that. Or click, try to click that right arrow. Oops, of course. No. Shannon, help. Mm. Come on. Why are you stuck? Mm. Hmm. Uh, well, let me see if I can make. Nope, I can't make it escape. Oh, dear. <laughs> then just maybe. Come on. Let's see. Oh, there's a there's a arrows at the bottom left of your screen. It looked yeah. like it popped up. Try clicking on the slide. Let's see. Okay, yeah, click on oh, the well, slide. Yeah, okay. So this is um this mirror on the right is black beauty. This was my, when we moved from the farm, I don't know what happened. I never even asked my dad what happened to Trixie. We didn't have a trailer and so I guess he sold her. And this was a mare named Black Beauty. And I wish you could see this, this. She had a bridle on that I had made with these brilliant, these little round buttons you could get that had, were shiny. And I made her bridle and uh, <laughs> I've got shafts on here. I don't know what that was about because um, kind of interesting because at the stable we always rode English even though I showed in Western pleasure and Western equitation but we were hunter jumper primarily and so that was Black Beauty and my sister Susan and now Wes how do I do the next one there the space bar I, I want to control this better I want to go back to Blaze and I, I need to go Okay, there we go. I want to go to this one. Now this mare is a beautiful mare. She was not mine, actually. Her name was Blaze, but she was loaned to me by Mrs. Metherall at Briarcrest Stables because in the big Edmonton Spring Horse Show, which is still going on, it's a nine day show. You start at eight in the morning and you go to usually 11 at night. It's a huge, in those days it, was, it handled many, many thousand people. They had a live organist who played with music with all the horses. And in those classes, we had often 30, 40 classes in the pleasure horse classes and in the hunter jumpers. And um, this, there was a special class called the school pony class. It wasn't school horses, it was for horses ridden to school by kids. And I won that with this mare, but they named her Linda's Folly because she did dump me a couple of times. And again, you know, you remember those moments. This was a wonderful mare. And wow, those of you who know personality, look at how broad she is between the eyes and how flat and her lovely large nostrils and her ears are set wide apart and slightly to the side. And if you think the way this horse would have been bucked out in a very small round pan with really high sides because horses sometimes tried to climb out and they would be bucked out one time. And then my riding teacher would um, tie them. Mrs. Metherall would ride a Western saddle for that to lead the horse that I was on because because I was a kid with all the experience of so many years on horses. I was the one who was put on these horses and led at the walk, trot, and canter in the big arena, of course, outdoor in those days, and, um, and would ride them. And this was a, a lovely mare. So I want to now see how I advance this. I am really apologetic. Hello, Linda. Yeah. Yep. Hello. Hello. Abel! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yeah, is so <laughs> like this is yep. Dr. Abel Eastendugel, and from Switzerland. And this is so an uh, honor to have you on here. And oh, if only I was fast enough. We just pulled up a picture yesterday that I found of um, years ago. I many many years. First of all, Abel Eastendugel came to our stable in West Wind with his promise, his, his bride-to-be, Vanja, and rode with us and spent like several weeks with um, Ursula Bruins touring California. And we have been friends ever since. Um, I just- <laughs> So many long years. 
<laughs> and and Abel Wiesenthal was the head veterinarian for the Zurich Zoo for many, many years. And he translated my book, the, the what is it called in English? What is the, what is the book? Uh, what is that book in English? The, it's the new way and, um, the Lawyer Week. Here, it, it, yeah, but what is the, with Shannon help, what's the book in English? But um, it's a wonderful book about all animals. Oh, it's, it's called The Tellington Tea Touch. And, um, and, and Evald wrote the introduction and talks about one of the times I was there giving a presentation to the to vets at the vet school. And you had that snow leopard that had a, the snow leopard had an undiagnosable respiratory illness. And, and I remember the keeper bringing this leopard out, putting her in my lap. And I just did tiny, tiny, tiny raccoon touches along her spine from the nose all the way back over the spine to the tip of the tail. And now that's where I was using energy and what I mean by energy I don't mean running energy I was just holding the intention of activating that healing potential that we all have that knowledge of our the function of every cell in our body and I was just talking to that brilliance of the body and she had bloody mucus out of every nos bubbling with her breath and I just went over the whole body and what I was imagining as I was doing this the other leopard was watching me from behind the inner cage and I was imagining that she could feel that and when I put them back remember you measured the temperature a couple of hours later and it was normal yes and yes. all the official people the zoo director Peter Weilerman and all the other vets found us crazy, <laughs> crazy people. But, crazy people. And but then the I no remember, survived. <laughs> and they survived. But then, though it's beautiful, we have a picture of you on the outside of the enclosure. And that leopard then would come over. And there's a picture of you giving an injection through the fence. And the leopard's going, pushing into you, remember? <laughs> Imagine, this is a magic manual. What he does with animals is just so beautiful. All the stories of the amazing connection with the, the, the uh, gorillas and the chimps. It's just such a pleasure to see you. <laughs> uh, Linda's uh, meeting in 71 in America changed my life. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And so I think it opened you to new possibilities, did it? No, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And he used to, I have to tell you this a story. I know this is about horses, but yeah, the story that I just love is the, um, the, uh, the orangutans used to take these, one, these sacks and they would tie them up in the top of the enclosure, tie them up and then sleep in them. And then they would bring their babies down to you and hold them up to get their vitamins and injections and stuff. And do you remember the story that you told me about one morning, the sun was coming in and one of them couldn't sleep because the sun was getting in her eyes and she stood up and ripped off a piece of the sack and put it over her eyes and went back to sleep. <laughs> you have to have another book in you, Evald. You have to write all those stories. Yeah, that is what Menja says. You have to write the story of your life with the animals. Yes. And the thing is, this is about listening. This is all about listening and it's not in the normal for me not the normal animal communication and I am the greatest advocate of animal communication but it's about getting a sense from the heart just knowing what it is listening to their whispers and my brilliant sister Robin Hood um, I was um, I was giving uh, we were at a four-day workshop with Dr. Reiner Klimka 
and he had asked me to be at the side of the arena watching every horse who came in and making my comments what I would do. And what we were doing in the stable with Robin and a lot of our practitioners were working on, there were 12 horses in that four days that he worked with, giving them the balance rein, the promise wrap, and they were riding with Dr. Klimpuk with these. And at night we did a workshop and we were, each of us were asked questions. And one of them came, I can't remember what the question was, but Robin said like something like, learn to listen to the whispers of your horse. And it was 2000 people were there. It was really incredible. And that's the first time this came up to say, learn to listen to the whispers. And it's the set of the head, the set of the ears. What are they, what are they thinking? Now, what I want to do is just jump to, um, if I can, on this slide, I'm going to look at horse pictures rather than the, well, Shannon, if I could just figure out how to advance these, this is, you all should try to coach me on this before and I normally can get this, but. Um, so why don't you stop the share? Yeah. Stop the share. And, but and I just, I want go to find your picture no I, they're down i just want to go down on these. Oh, okay slides. just hit the space bar and it'll go through the slides for you that's what i'm doing these not working how about your return key my return yep it's not try if you just click on the slides it may it may go through for you yeah that's what i'm doing uh, oh there ah uh, okay So I just I want to just go through because we have a lot of people who are apparently on here and don't know this work. But when we when we talk about when I talk about listening to the whispers of the horse, what's possible with this work of the Tellington method is to learn these different steps and through those that's how you learn to listen. It's through the observation, which I'm going to show you an interesting picture, how you look at that observation, how important that is. The T-touch, and I'm going to give you a little short example of actually working on a horse in a stall. So you really get to see some of the T-touches. The leading exercises that we call dance steps. The playground for higher learning. These are the elements that we work with and the equipment, the balance rein, the promise wrap, the liberty ring, riding without a bridle, riding without a bit, and then the style of riding that we use. I just, boy, I'm sorry, I've never had this not work like this before. So and click on the um, screen again. Okay, yeah. That's there what you I go. Have to do. Now, this is what I, I just want to give you an overview, what lists, what, how we get to um, influence the horse. And that is, and what this work does. First of all, this honoring the body, mind, and spirit of horses and their people is a basis of this work. Respecting them, listening. There are many other, there are many methods out there. And it's funny, I woke up this morning thinking about Pat Pirelli. And you know, there's so many, I've known Pat forever. He called me when his son was just born and had some issues and we've been friends ever since. And I don't approve of some of the ways they do it. When I say approve, it's not my style. But what I do want to acknowledge about the Pirelli work is they, Linda and Pat brought a way of being with horses um, for, for fun and play. I don't always think it was fun for the horses, but that's neither here nor there. It was a different way. And I want to honor that here. I woke up thinking about that and I'm actually going to call Pat later and tell him that. Um, so <laughs> I think this honoring what each one of us brings to the table and who we are, including the fears that we have, it's really important, but this we're honoring the body, mind, and spirit of horses and their, and, their, and their humans. And what this work does, we affect behavior. We enhance performance with this work. We support well-being. And always, it's with, it's with your veterinary working with, this is never a replacement for your veterinarian. And we deepen the relationship. Now, 
in order to do it, we have to change our mind if we want to change our horses. And what you think is what you get. In other words, when I was working on that little snow leopard, what I was not seeing, I was not seeing the high temperature, the problem that they had. I was seeing the amazing ability of this body to take care of itself, the function of our body. We are all miracles, you all. That's what I want to mirror back to you. Every one of you, we're miracles. How do you think our blood flows? Wait a minute, why can we see? Why can we speak? Because every cell in the body knows its function in the body. And this beautiful work of Dr. Um, Bruce Lipton in the spontaneous evolution, it talks about how the cells communicate between each other. And it's that communication between the cells of our animals, our people, of everything, that makes this life possible. And what is behind that? It's the source of all it is. And when we, that's what we're holding up. That is what is behind this Skellington work, is that acknowledging that you're a miracle. Our animals are miracles. And the tea touch is just a key in that one and a quarter circles. And that's all, if you take, if you don't know this work and you take away from here, just very gently over your whole animal's body, whether it's horse, dog, cat, chicken, doesn't matter, over the whole body with these one and a quarter circles, that is actually <laughs> a replication of this spiral, this spiral in every part of nature. And it, this tea touch is like one part of the Dellington method is this tea touch is like activating that a genius in every cell in the body. And that's scientifically now so much beautiful science behind that genius of every cell in the body. So the basic tea touch is one and a quarter circles. And I just, if you, if you don't know this work, just put your arm up and you, I'm doing this so you can see it. You don't have to hold your arm up here. Gently put your thumb on and curve your fingers and very gently just move the tissue in one circle and a quarter. And by doing this, you can release fear at the cellular level. And if you have fear or your animal has fear, it's one and a quarter. Pause, breathe, and a quarter circle back. And it's whichever direction feels best to you. So this is kind of um, one thing you should know that the second T in T-Touch stands for trust, trust. And four tips here for getting this trust in your horse is the whole body work, which I'm going to show you a few, just a few minutes of work on a horse and the ear T-Touch, because if you want to develop trust, you bring that head down and you just from the base of the ear out to the tips, do these work from the base out to the tips. The lick of the cow's tongue, and you're going to see that um, in, in the video that I'm going to show you. And the tail tea touch, because with the tail work, you activate the cranial sacral fluid that goes through the entire spine and you give that horse a connection from the ears back to the tail. And can then with the lick of the cow's tongue, which you'll see, ground, bring them into the body. And then with the work down the legs, you can ground them. So even if you just do these four things, you'll find a huge difference in your horse. This is a fun shot. This was at the school that um, Sylvia Jordan, who's here, was at that school, and this is in Badger, California. Shannon Weil was there. And this is starting, um, this is how we used to start horses outside. This is Hungarian Groflo. He was a five-year-old when he came to me from the ranch in Montana, from Countess Bessigny. And um, we used to start them outside. And this is with a bit with lunge lines run through the stirrups. And we started with the Western saddle because it's so much easier for the, to, to balance the weight of the rider in the beginning. But later, in later years, I stopped using the bit and I attached to the halter because it's too much 
for this, unless you're really good and see here, I had to hold him back as he jumped this ditch. Now, this was, I want to tell you about this horse. Um, he came down from Montana. Of course, he'd been trimmed and handled, was very well halter trained, not halter broken, halter trained when I got him. But this is how I developed trust before I ever rode him. It was just sitting on him, lying down. And we developed a really wonderful bond. But what was special about this horse? <laughs> I, at the time I was starting him, I had another horse named uh, Tonsolo. And if I rode Tonsolo first, if I took him out of the paddock first and rode him, this horse a couple of times tried to punish me by rubbing me off on a tree. I remember this really well. Now, this is way before we did all the tea touch. When I started to bring the work on the body into this, it was a game changer. It made a huge difference in the attitude of horses. But we started ground driving, you know, since I was 12, we did that. So the horse learned to stop, stand still, go forward, wait. But I was thinking about this, like I never punished this horse for that because I understood that he wanted to be first. And you'd think, wait a minute, do horses really think like that? Yeah, that's my experience. <laughs> they really do understand. And so I listened to that and the horse turned out to be a wonderful saddle horse and it was never a problem once we established that. And oh my gosh, if we'd had tea touch, it would have been so much easier and so much faster. But why I wanted to tell you this story, it wasn't my attitude to, well, I'm going to really punish him. No, I listened to him and I got that for whatever reason that was, I don't know what it was, he wanted to be first. And we did that. And Shannon, you remember this horse. He was a wonderful, wonderful saddle horse. So I just wanted to point this out. Punishment is something I used to do. And I was never terrible because I had the influence of my grandfather. When I say terrible, like one, I, like I said, I used to give them thunder. On my video that's still out there, starting young horses from ground driving, at one horse, at one point, this young horse, four-year-old Arab, was a little pushy because he was tense. And I, I gave him a bash like this, like once on the chest with the side of the, what we call a wand, not a whip like that. And it stopped him in his tracks. I would not do that today because I wasn't recognizing. And you have to understand, I've been training horses a lot of years, very successfully at that point, but I didn't understand his forwardness was from stress, tension, not understanding. Today, we just say, whoa, wait a minute. Let's slow down here. Let's go back in the labyrinth. Stop, stand, listen, or maybe let him run out, run around and play first. Maybe let him free and let him get some energy off. That's another possibility. So I am going to, oops, oh yeah, I did a few blanks. Now, I wanted to show you this because one of the most important things you can do for success is groom your horses with respect. What do I mean by that? I mean, groom them in a way that is comfortable for them. Uh, if you are a groom in Europe, and you go to grooming to, to school to become a groom, then you used to be that you have to have show the teacher you had 13 marks of the curry comb on the wall and you curried them like with a lot of vigor. I mean, all of us in Pony Club learned that. Lots of vigor, right? But what if the horse doesn't like it? And this horse is named Charmer. He was a six-year-old in Germany. The rider, wonderful young Canadian, uh, young in your 30s, a trainer came to me at Equiton a few years ago and said, she bought this horse, he's really nice, but he doesn't like her. What could she do so he would like her? And I said, well, what makes you think he doesn't like you? Well, when I go to catch him in the pasture, he doesn't come to me. And I said, how is he to groom? Well, he doesn't stand still. Okay, so how do you groom him? Well, you know, like usual. I, 
And of course, with correctness, right? Lots of circles. And so I said, go home and uh, groom him with whatever it takes so that he can actually stand still when you bring your hand up there. And so um, I called her a few weeks later, or actually a couple of months later, I was going by that part of Germany. And so I said, I'd like to, how's it going? And she said, well, it's some better, but he's still not standing still. So I went and I have a, a series, these are professional pictures by a really good photographer. And um, he wouldn't, he still wouldn't stand still because she couldn't put her hand on him without him wanting to move away. And so this is something we call, it's on, in all my books called Taming the Tiger. And I developed this style for working with a 21 year old thoroughbred stallion in Australia who could only be handled by one person because he would, he had savaged people. And um, so the way this is, there's a ring over on the wall on the left. And I have this red rope, it's two different colors so you can see them. Red rope run through the halter ring, through the ring in the side and attached to the halter on the off side, on his right side. And then I have this other lead rope, the blue, so easily see attached to the halter now i can and i want him about three feet from the wall like i don't want him to be crowded and so i can steady him with this and then that's how i want that him to be able to stand on a loose line now i'm touching his belly and look at his face he's not happy with me just with my hand on the underside of his body he's not trusting and I, he brings his head down. As I go down his legs, I want him to watch me. So I have all these pictures. I mean, we have so much to show you. I'm not going to show them all to you. But by the end, I could stand there with him not tied and go over his whole body. And that's what I recommend to you if you want your horses to be in what we call in the body really having a good sense of awareness of every inch of their body. That's what makes them safe and stable and as healthy as possible. So I just wonder now if there are any comments or questions. I'm going to stop a minute. And Shannon, are there any, uh, any comments or questions here? And if you, uh, Bibi, if you, I've not seen any in the comments yet. Okay, BB, if you want to jump in, I'd love to have. If you would like to say something, and 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 Vonda, you've had both of you so many years experience. BB came to this work by um, she was an endurance rider to begin with, and I don't know, it's thirty years ago almost. <laughs> came to this work and now teaches all over Europe, of course, and heads our program for. Um, for uh, certification for horses and dogs. Bibi, do you want to jump on and just well, say I, a few I, words? I, actually, I just want to kind of repeat how, how good this uh, Taming the Tiger thing is and I re how much I love it. Because it, on one hand, it stabilizes the horse and tells the horse, no, you have, there are boundaries and, and you have to stay here. Uh, but on the other hand, you tell the horse and you can trust me. So um, it has both sides. Of course, it needs us, it needs the the kick touch attitude to do that and not force the horse to do something that it doesn't want to do. But still telling the horse you have to do this and you are safe. So and, and I think this is a great message for many horses. I love it. Yeah, thank you. It, it's very helpful. And then this this I put this in here because this is. Um, before COVID, <laughs> each year I did a three-day training um, at a stable in of one of our practitioners in southern Germany. And we bring, um, I forget how many, I think I take 10 horses for the weekend. And we have our top practitioners there. And I, with another of our practitioners and three of the auditor of the participants active, are with one horse and then at the other end of the arena, we have another horse. So I, with every, I take them each for half an hour. Now, I just want to show you about boundaries. This horse has this red, what we call, this is a, an ace wrap. 
it's not tight. It's not like the bands now. It's interesting. Some of the people have copied what we started with this and they do it with really heavy bands. That's not the idea. This is, this is called a promise wrap because it's a, a promise for engagement. And it's a promise to overcome fears that horses have behind. And you can't see it so clearly here, but I have what we call a, a balance rein around the neck. And I can just pick that up and, and it affects the muscles that actually bring the back up. And I'm riding, I'm riding with our Tellington training bit. If you don't know it and you've never seen it, you think, what, oh my God. And horses love it. And it gives them a whole new sense of being and a way, and a way of safely being um, where you don't need or want to have contact all the time. So this is another way of creating these boundaries. Now, I'm just going to play around a little bit. This horse, I was thinking, this is a picture I wanted to pull up for those of you who know Pat Pirelli. This was really fun at the Western State Expo. I was the first woman to be indicted in, inducted into the, the Hall of Fame and Pat had received it the year before and hadn't been there. And so he didn't get his trophy. So we rode together for, Shannon was actually there in that crowd. And um, I didn't have a horse. So one of the women who was in a, they, they had a quadrille of paint horses and I was given this mare to ride and I had about five minutes on her and we walked in. I just said hi to Pat and he said, let's gallop. So we galloped around. I'm holding the trophy in one hand, my reins in the other. We galloped around once and he said, let's run down the center line and do a sliding stop. So we did that and I did it with one hand. And I, I <laughs> it was so much fun for me to do this. And you say, wait a minute, are you kidding? You'd been on this. I was on the horse five minutes before. How did I know she could do it? Because the rider I knew loves this horse. This horse loved to perform. And when I get on the horse, my whole attitude is, ah, what, how can we have this time together that's going to be fun for us both? And it's that, that is the energy of appreciation. If you can't yet use the word love, because I couldn't for a long time, it's gratitude and appreciation. And horses understand when you have that. It's just when I step in the stirrup, that's my feeling. This is an honor to be with you. It's not what can I do, you know, to uh, control this horse or what can I win? Totally different. And because of it, I won a lot more than my fair share showing in these this big nine day show in Canada. So I wanted to show you something here. Darn it, I didn't. So this is, look at this mirror. This was in one of our trainings. Sorry, I didn't, didn't change it around. This was a horse that, look at her ears are pinned back. This is, this, now I have to figure out how to get back. Eh, well, Linda, if you hover there. over the lower left corner, you'll get some arrows. Take your cursor and hover over the lower left. Uh, uh, there you uh, go. Uh, you oh, see the see arrows them. there? No, I can't. See. I don't see them. I can't see. Them. It doesn't matter. The point is, you saw we put her in the homing pigeon first of all, and now. Here she is going with what we call a liberty ring around her neck, no bridle. Remember the face she was making, the ears were pinned back when she was being ridden with the bridle. What I find with horses, when you take these bridles off them and you start this process of trust that it takes to ride like this, horses start smiling and it's a different it's a whole different cup of tea doing this and I, I we have a process it's in my book showing you how step to step you can do this you know unless you're very even if you're very experienced 
I recommend going through these steps just so you can teach it to others. And I taught this to um, Ingrid Klimka about been 12 years or so ago. And I, I meet her every time at Equitana. And the last time she said she just doesn't understand. She cannot get her students to do it because they don't trust. Well, you have to go through step by step taking the bridle off. You can't just expect a person to do it uh, without having the safety factor of being a, knowing that the horse is going to stop. So I highly recommend it. And we do it by having first riding with your bridle or whatever you normally ride with, with that ring. And just having the reins on the neck and getting the horse to bend. And if that's all you do, just dropping the reins on the neck, you'll, you'll find a difference in your level of trust and your horse's level. Now, this is just to show you um, the touch on your own arm. And I, I wanted to give you this. If any of you have pain in your body anywhere, and most of us do at some point, instead of thinking, oh my gosh, how bad is it going to get? You just start talking to the genius in every cell in your body to function ideally. And how I came to this was in my during my Feldenkrais training in 1976, a book was recommended to us called Man on His Nature by Sir Charles Sherrington. And Sherrington was a Nobel Prize winner. And in the second chapter in this book, which was he wrote, he, he wrote many research books, but this was the only book on the on philosophy. And his premise that every cell knows its function in the body is what totally got me and thinking, wait a minute, this is the second year of my four year training with Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais at the Humanistic Psychology Institute in San Francisco. And we did not yet know how to do the miracles that we know we can do with the Feldenkrais work. And so I, when I read that premise by Sir Charles Sherrington, I thought, wait a minute, if every cell in my body knows its function in my body, all I have to do is a cell, just, and this is before I got the circular T-touches, just remind this body of its potential for ideal function. And when I got the circular touches, which was an intuitive thing in 1983 that just came to me, hmm, it, it was years before we realized that's this golden ratio the spiral in all of nature, that's like having a key to turn on the intelligence to connect with the intelligence in every cell in your body. And no, you can release fear and pain in yourself. This is a gift from the horses and from all animals because I never would have developed it for you, for humans, if it wasn't for the animals. So just know, and if you have any questions, just sitting there, if you don't know this work, and if even if you do, hey, <laughs> sorry, I have to cough here a minute. Just one second here. Can I do this? And I wanted to do this. <coughs> I don't want to cough in your ear. Um, if you, even if you know this work, Think of it from this point of view. Wait a minute. This is like a key to connect with that cellular intelligence. This body that knows how to function ideally. Just activate that. It's like a key you know, to connecting. And that is, what else is it? It's the source of all this. It's what it, the, the God factor. It's incredible when we connect with that. We're not healing anything. We're just supporting the body's brilliance to take care of itself. And we need this during this COVID time for our animals, for ourselves. Now, see what else I put in here. Because I, I want to... Come on, where? No. Oh. Go forward. I'm doing all the things I did before, Shannon. <laughs> Ready. So click on the screen. No, no, don't don't report anything. There you go. Okay, and then I am. I'm clicking on the screen. There. Yeah, I just 
Uh, I want to point this out to you, and then I'm going to show you a couple of horses. I want to show you a couple of things. But this, I want you to put in here, because part of this learning to listen to horses is learning to forgive yourself and forgive your horses when they do something. Now, forgiving does not mean accepting. That's the brilliance of my sister, Robin. Remember, even when we accept, be when we forgive behavior, we don't necessarily accept that and what we want to do is instead of punishment so wait a minute how can i be clear how can i show this horse what i want but when you have a situation with a, yourself or your horse and you do something like i've had to do this <laughs> when i think of the horses that i punished that i would never today punish for that I can use this, um, it's called Ho'oponopono, and in the next slide you'll see if you're, I really recommend you get one of these little books um, about it, and they're just, it's really simple, four things you say to yourself, and this is in more than 50 languages, this really works in any situation, and that you say to yourself, or whatever the situation is, I'm sorry, please forgive me, Thank you, because it's done. And I love you. And the I love you is the really hard part. It's about you love yourself no matter what you've done. What? How can I love myself? It's not okay. Love that part of yourself ha! that is this source energy, this am amazing brilliance, this genius in every cell in your body. Love your higher self. And then I add this that actually is a really good idea. It's not part of it, but it's I give this over to that other source, to my angels, to my guides, to my God, whatever that is. So these are the books that you can get um, that I recommend. There are many books out there, but if you just want a simple explanation, I've read this over and over. It's it, originally in German by Ulrich, Ulrich Dupre, and it's Ho'oponopono, the Hawaiian forgiveness ritual as a key to your life. And this is important when you are working with horses, you all, because we all do things or have behavior in our horses that we don't want. Now, the other one is, if you like to delve into what's behind it, I love this book. It's originally in French and it's Luc Bodine and two others, because he's written many books. So it's the book of Ho'oponopono, the Hawaiian practice of forgiveness and healing. And it tells what's behind this, the connection to the, the Heart Math Institute and to quantum science, why this stuff works. And so if you love to learn and to read, I really recommend this. Now, I'm going to, um, wait, I want to switch now, Shannon, oh my God. I want to, well, while I'm here, I'll just mention this. If you don't know this book, that I won't come back to this. I want to play a couple of things for you. That's my latest book. And it's Training and Retraining Horses, The Tellington Way, written with my, man, my niece, Mandy Pretty. And it's got many, many uh, examples of horses that we turned around and the steps that we took to do it. And all the steps are in here. And if you want a method, whether you're working with your horses and you just want to just have another way of being with them, deepening your connection, it's in this book. Or if you have an issue with a horse, it's in this book. And I've, we've had many people read this and say, wow, I just really appreciate that. And if you want, you can get it on Amazon, of course. If you're willing to wait for a while, you can get free shipping from us on our website on ttouch.com on the, on the American website only for those in America in this case. Otherwise, go to Amazon. So um, this is another possibility, we horse. And this is um, actually, uh, I'm one of the many, many trainers in we horse. And you've got lots of different touches in it in the wehorse.com. And I just want to put this, and then I'm going to show you some videos of actually the work. Come on. No. Yeah, it didn't want to go forward. Be nice there. So there is one possibility. I have, I have one space left um, on April 16 to 18. I'm doing a live and 
online interactive course and but we have opened it up to auditors and if you want to learn a lot it's six hours for these three days and lots of video and opportunity to learn the steps of doing this i only take um 12 horses in this but you can have limited unlimited auditors and you learn a great deal so you can go um if you're interested you can go to my sister's website and it's um it's go to either the ttouch.com or to learn dot ttouch.ca for Canada for this. So I want to, um, I'm going to now see if I can, oh yeah, and, and if, well, I think all of you already know we're on Facebook, um, the T-Touch community, the world, and Shannon runs this, Linda Tellington Jones on the go. And that's our website. Now, I want to see if I can get out of here. Oh, help. Yes, what I wanted to do was to close this down and don't save. And now what I, first of all, are there any questions before I start showing a couple of other things, Shannon? Any comments or questions? I don't see any questions or comments. Okay. So I want to show you a video of how what this looks like. Uh, 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 uh. Screen share. I have to think a moment. Sorry, just give me a moment here. Uh, where am I going? Get this out of the way. I have it, had it up on my screen and it's disappeared. And I'm going to go to here. <laughs> I always wonder why my sister talks to herself when she does this, but now I absolutely know. Um, Fabio, I'm looking for the Fabio video. Pray for me, you all. <laughs> I had, um, okay. We're going to go here. I had this pulled up and it's, it, it didn't stay with me on my desktop. Oh, help. Do you um, want to do a search on it? There we that, go. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Oops. The pressure. Okay. Three videos. There is what I want. Uh, this is the one. Okie doke. Now, I'm going to... Oh, I, hmm, darn. I have to start the sound on it because I, it's worth hearing the sound. First of all, I'll just tell you about this horse. This is in Southern Germany at the Megla stables. Um, and this is a horse, an eight-year-old who had the issue that in the, in the arena, if another horse was coming in his direction, he would, it would really scare him and he would spin around or really get tense. And so I showed the last time I did this, I showed another video on his body. And I'm just going to show you some simple things that you can do. And I like to work a horse in the stable like this free, just because it gives him an opportunity to connect with me. And so um, I think I'm just going to let it go and explain it as we go. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have the sound on. Hmm. Okay. Can you hear that? Uh, no. Right. Um, That's because I don't have the sound on. So I'm, I'm just going to talk you through it because otherwise I take the chance of getting out of here and not getting back in. Okay, so we'll, so this is, um, I've been working with him about five, 10 minutes at this point and it's feeding time. So I'm going to let him eat and I'm just going to give him a sense of his body with what we call the Troika. 
Now this is a circle and a quarter and a little like a little little arc to the next spot. And you go over the entire horse with this, connecting from head to toe. And the fact that I want him to just be able to stand here loose because he can turn around and look at me, which you'll see he'll do at some point, like right there. And he says, be careful because he's sensitive in the girth area. And notice I'm giving the back of my hand and he can go on eating. Yeah. And underneath this circle, just this light circle and a quarter and lick of the cow's tongue. And I'm very, I pay attention to going 90 degrees. I don't just, it's not just a, a sort of move. I'm really paying attention. See, when I get back there to the flank, he's saying, yeah, I'm a little sensitive there. And so I say, okay, be very polite. And I have to be, I have to listen. That's listening to him. Not just telling him to, you know, stand still. Just quietly moving. Now, if you have a horse who doesn't like this, boy, you just start with circle and a little slide and you have to do be very respectful so you can actually get them to accept this all over the body. Now we have like, I just want him to think. Good. And people have said to me, is it okay um, that they eat? Yes, absolutely. And sometimes you'll find that they'll stop eating when you do this, which is fine too. And I melt my hand on him and I give him a chance here to think see he's looking what are you doing and i'm using my breath here if you could hear me at like now he's feeling that on the other side he's starting to feel his body And he's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I, I just give him time. I want to head down. Good. And that's listening to him, not just telling him to uh, stay still, don't, you know, whack him, whatever. <laughs> people do when horses don't stand still. And this connection, I have to tell you, I have so many cases of horses. I, I, I've, I'm going to be showing them in, in the weekend video where horses who, yes, they were very obedient, but they didn't have a connection with the person. This is just doing a little bit of, nah, we call jellyfish jiggle there. This is where on the neck right there, he was hard. That was too much pressure I used. Kind of waiting for him. Listening. It's like listening with your hands. And when I say that, I don't mean I'm, I don't know what I'm feeling. I'm just paying attention to what he's thinking and feeling. So he's finished his grain. And he had been eating hay off the floor be before. So this gives you a sense of it. I'm going to stop the screen share here. And what I want you to um, go away from this is we have here I am, I'm going to go back to speaker. I, I want to, I want to just know if there's any questions that you have just from what I've done so far. And I think what I am going to do, I'm going to show you a typical, a, a picture, a couple of pictures of a horse called Big Surprise. Some of you have seen this before. Now this was a horse Oops, I, got a, I have to screen share again. 
let's see, we got to go here, Linda, screen share. I want you to see this. Um, okay, right here. Now, this horse came to me in uh, Italy. Each year before COVID, for 13 years, I've done a three-day sport horse course in Italy. And um, four riders come to me. This is one of them. He's a wonderful, uh, high, one of the highest approvals of ratings of instructors in Italy. Very excellent teacher and trainer. And he brought this horse because a 16 year old boy was riding him. He's a jumper and he was really unreliable, really dangerously spooky and would flip out. Now, I'm going to show you just a couple of pictures of him. Um, what, they, what the rider said that he would do is he would, um, look at this, he would be going in one direction. If anything frightened him at all, he would just spin and bolt. Now you have to look carefully because his tail is up in the air. He's his look at how high his head is. His nostrils are sucked in and his ears are back and there are black flies flying all around him. The person holding him is Dr. Sylvia Tarasani and she's one of our top tea touch teachers in Italy. Look at the way this horse is standing. Now, one of the things that we really pay attention to is the physical balance of the horse and the mental and emotional balance. And we can change this in three days. And when I say three days, it's th three days. Uh, they got one hour with me and they got one hour with one of our teachers in the stable working on the horse's body for three days. Now look at, if you drop a plumb line from the point from, from just from the middle of the forearm in, in the middle in front of the elbow that should drop straight to the ground look how far behind that that plumb line that horse is standing and look from the hind legs their feet are together and way up under him this horse was just miserable and in three days <laughs> i want you to see just some of the changes. So one of the things that we did first with him, I took him and I worked him in hand. And I've got a chain on him. Now we don't use the chain much anymore um, because so many people who now with horses think they've only seen chains used to abuse horses. We don't do that. And this chain is run through the side ring and I don't use rope halters because those knots and the rope halters are meant to cause pain. <laughs> They're on pressure points. So I run the chain in the side ring and up to the side and it's to have the weight of the chain to bring the head down. Now in my right hand, this is one of our tools. This is a white stiff dressage whip. And we specifically use the white because horses respond to it differently. And we don't call it a whip. We call it a wand because it works like magic. And if we call this a whip, you can only think of, of horses being punished. And notice there's a, his head is down now and I'm taking him into the labyrinth. And over the period of time, what we did, this is like, coming around the corner of the labyrinth and I'm bringing his head down you know? and just so I work in the labyrinth and I'm going to just show you a few of these different things that we did with him. This was one of the moments where we got where he reached out and touched me. I was about to touch the forelock and do a little slide on the forelock and his ears are forward. This is where he made a decision. He recognized that I'm listening to him. I'm not there to dominate him. I'm just there. We're there with him to give him an experience of trust. And that's what happened in three days. 
in three days, this horse changed from the, what you saw before until I'm going to just show you in the end and then show you a few. In the, and, and the rider said that he could not stand to be in an arena with other people. He couldn't stand to have any kind of uh, like any scary things in the arena, couldn't have dogs around. We had all of that. And this is on the third day and Sebastian is riding him again. Notice we have a purple. This is um, a promise wrap and he has the balance rein on him and he's just standing between the plastic. So that's one of the elements that we use in what we call the play playground for higher learning. Notice he's on a completely loose rein. And we've gone through these different things. This is one on the second day. This is one of the elements. We hold the wands up. I like to use pool noodles because you can see them easier and they're light. But here we've got Sebastian and um, uh, Dr. Uh, Massimo DeRay. He's one of our amazing Tellington teachers. And they have now a center uh, that just opened a couple of months ago called Bella Vista in Northern Italy. It's a training and rehab center. And in spite of COVID, they are full. And it's just amazing. Now look at this horse. We're just standing around. And these are, these are auditors who are there in the arena with me because I want lots going on with the horse. And notice I'm just standing there letting him be with me, see me. Just be there. And he goes under these and he's, uh, then I ride him through this, if I can see against my light here. Right? Oh yeah, here, it's right here. I'm, I love this picture. Now this is trotting the plastic on one side and it's on the other side, but you can't see it. Now I'm riding him with the blue, that's a balance rein. I don't have the promise wrap on him here. It's funny, I didn't have it on yet. This is the second day and I'm riding him at the trot through this. Now on, this is on purpose. We've got all this stuff hanging around on the jump standards because they said he'll, he will never be in the, in the arena with all that stuff. That's how fast you can change a horse when you gain their trust. That's the thing that's so interesting. And this is just Massimo, I'll run through these, showing Sebastian how we work with this training bit, opening the fingers, not never with a closed fist. You cannot, which is taught everywhere except in centered riding and connected riding. Everyone else teaches a closed fist and it's a big, yeah, we do it very differently. Okay, so now I can't make my things advance. Okay, this is Sebastian just riding him on a loose rein with the balance rein. That was the first day, trotting him through the second day, trotting him through that plastic. This is another thing I want you to do. When you can have another person working with you, the boundaries that BB talked about that we give to horses with the Taming the Tiger, this is what we call um, the um, journey of the homing pigeon. By having a person on each side, you create boundaries and you create a sense of safety and you activate both sides of the horse's brain. That's what is so important. And this horse, and we have the wands there and they kind of moving the wands out in front. So he gets totally relaxed and used to it. Look at his ears, look at the set of the neck. You know, it's a very different picture than what we saw before. So, and this is with another vet in the class um, that we had and we changed it the following day, we changed people with them. This is just doing the body work on him, doing the hind leg exercises, doing his tail. And this is what you want with the tail to touch. You want the horse's head to be free so he can turn around and look at you. Because listen, you all, this is the cheapest insurance you can get. When your horse is no longer afraid of things behind, instead of spinning around and looking at it, they dare to, learn to bend the head and look back, they will not spook at things. That is really important. 
And there he is. This is the, the second day. Look at all of us standing around talking. We're watching the other horse, waiting for this horse to have his turn. Now, the reason I got his feet cut off here, notice how the legs are straight up front legs. Notice the plumb line and the back legs. This is after one hour under saddle, work on the ground and tea touch and, the, and an hour of tea touch in the stall. And he is standing on um, Wendy Murdoch's um, uh, surefoot pads, but the, the, the original ones, because we didn't have yet the new ones, <laughs> and she didn't want to show the original ones, so it's a, that made a huge difference, and if you all don't know Wendy Murdoch's surefoot pad, look it up, because it's a life changer. It's a horse changer. There he is, the third day, just trotting casually. There's 25 people standing around in that arena. He's just trotting before we rode him through and then I rode him with this promise wrap and this is how you take the liberty ring at first I'm back with his own bit on it uh, excuse the riding pants we had a sponsor there a clothing horse sponsor and Italians love at that point bright clothes I, they're a little bright for me <laughs> but it was fun there you saw those there he is going under the pool noodles and the just little jump at the end. So I, I wanted to give you a sense that this, now what was great, of course, they stayed in touch with, the, the, with Sebastian, the trainer. And two weeks later, this horse went to a show and he was completely calm, just like he was in that class. And they kept doing a little tea touch. It doesn't take, I mean, 10 minutes a day will make a difference with your horse. So I, I want you to go away today with the idea that you, from making this heart to heart, cell to cell and soul to soul connection, that you can, um, you can make a big difference in your horses. I'm, I'm going to stop this screen share. Or did I already? Maybe. Yeah. And so, I, Linda, we have a couple of comments. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Maureen Kaufman asks, can you talk about your tea touch for neurological issues? Uh, yes. And actually, what I was speaking, um, if they go to my website, you'll see we have a book written by a veterinarian on that very subject with Carol Lang, one of our instructors, with all of the tea touches that, and the, the wraps and the ground exercises for working with, with neurological issues with your vet. So it's, you'll see it on there. And unfortunately, I can just listen because I just realized what the time is in it. I have to be downtown at 1130 to get my COVID shot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's hear if there are other couples. So no, you, we do have that. We have a really wonderful experience and success with that. And it's in that booklet that you can get a book. So what, one more comment here, and that is from Anjet Krauss, who asks, uh, do you, did you ever get the idea that a horse became bored of you? After years of being together, he often looks away when you want to groom him. Um, so this is where I would use my body kinesiology. Is the looking away, are you sure that's the message that he's bored? That would be my question. I wouldn't interpret that as bored. And if he is bored, are you bored? Would be my question. And no, the question is, I, I don't, I haven't had that. And if I had a sense that what I was doing was boring the horse, that's a good question though. Do something else, do something that's fun for you that would be fun for him. And that's why like in the labyrinth, we don't just do it over and over. You do it a few times, you do the half walk, you do it with the head low, the head up, hmm, maybe a few steps backwards, change what you're doing. Because boredom, we don't need that. You Be creative. And one of the things I'll, I'll leave you with with the tea touches, what we know from the studies that we've done with using a mind mirror, 
and working with Anna Wise is when the, with the one and a quarter touches, there is an act, whether you do it or receive it, there is an activation in both hemispheres of the brain. What does that mean? It means with the left brain is a logic. We need this to be together here on this, to see this. And on the, and, and the logic keeps us present. It keeps us balanced. And the right brain activation is responsible for our feeling, which we can really shut down in this time of COVID. For our creativity, the right brain is responsible for our compassion and for our intuition, knowing, wait a minute, should I try this? Let's see what, let's find other ways to be with this horse so it's fun for both of us. So that's a great question. If you feel that it's bored, hmm, is the horse tied? Maybe take him in the arena. Like what I'm wanting people to do is be with their horses like Frederic does, Pignon does, just a little, in the beginning, a little and all, only do it when you're safe and you have full control. But so you've been a process where you can be with your horse, with your hands, with just maybe a little string around the neck, be hanging out without a halter on, just going in. And that's on one of my videos, uh, solving riding problems from the ground. We show how to do that. And then, and then lastly, I'd, I'd like to say um, hello and welcome to Jan Hopp. She says, this is all new to me and so educational. So welcome and welcome to anyone who is new here. <laughs> Thank you, Jan, uh, Shannon. And Jan Hopp is on our team. Um, I Part of what keeps me like at 83 with this energy, a huge part, is the fact that I've had a Beamer for actually 17 years now. And Jan Hopps on our Beamer team. And if any of you are interested in another level of support of your body, just um, drop me a note. And I'd love to send you some information about the Beamer for you or your horses. You can send it to Kirsten at ttouch.com if you'd like information about Beamer. And Beamer is a medical device that uh, that you just lie on it twice a day or you put it on your horse five, 10 or 15 minutes and it activates the circulation throughout the whole body. It's amazing thing. So thank you all. Thank you, Shannon, for your support. Avald, it, it's been such a treasure, treasure. I was going to call you yesterday, so it's perfect that you're here. Um, I may try to no, it's pretty late, but I may try to call you from the car on the way to, to my shot. Um, blessings on all of you. It was such a pleasure to be with you. And um, if you're not part of our community and you want to stay more in touch, join us and we'll be getting information. I do this for people online also starting um, next month. So blessings to you all. Stay safe, stay inspired. And... Um, Take each time, take time each day to count three blessings in your life. Send that energy out to the planet. Aloha. Aloha, Linda. Ciao. Ciao. I'll say goodbye to you all so you all on so I can see you and wave goodbye to the guys. <laughs> so nice.